All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, looks like uh, my conversation with scattering seeds is over. So there's a couple of points that I want to share with you all because it seems pretty apparent to me that I, I'm not able to help this fella, but perhaps I can help you. All right, so the first point I want to go over is um, the end of the world alright so in Matthew 24 Jesus is asked what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world alright and I obviously I, I encourage you all to read Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 it's the same thing alright let me let me just point that out to you real quick just so there's no uncertainty and really th this is for um, you know the the new believer or the young believer if you will um, that might not know I I want to believe that most of you already know because I talk about this constantly but in Matthew 24 Jesus has asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and so in Mark 13, we see the same thing being asked. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign? When all these things shall be fulfilled. It's the same question, and Jesus Jesus gives the same answer. Um, but each account in Matthew, Mark, and Luke vary just slightly. Just enough to give us a little more detail, uh, or a little different angle, if you will. It's probably a better way to look at it. It gives us a different angle to help us see. You know, it, this is going to sound goofy, but it's like having two eyes or even three eyes, where if you have one eye, you're, you don't ha quite have the perception. But being able to see out of two eyes, it gives you that sort of depth perception, if you will. And then, of course, having this third account helps as well here in Luke chapter 21. And here they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And Jesus is giving the same answer. This is the same moment in time. All right, and so we get a pretty good description of, you know, some things that are going to happen as we build up to the end of the world, but in all three cases the end of the world happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven alright now this is consistent with the rest of the Bible Old Testament and all going all the way back to the book of Genesis alright so when Jesus answers them he always says that the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. See here. All right. All three descriptions in Luke 21. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. I just want to make that clear and simple. All right, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds. He's, t he's talking about the same thing. When he comes in the clouds, it is the end of the world. When you shall see these things come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. All right, in Mark 13, when... Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then the angels shall gather together his elect and the same thing of course in Matthew 24 um, and then shall his angels then he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect it's the end of the world now this is not like half time 
or end of the first quarter and you gotta keep on reading I mean you I, I don't want to discourage you from keep on keep on reading for sure but this is it this is it that's the end of the world when he comes in the clouds of heaven and I mean this is consistent all throughout the Bible all right when he comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world all right, every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming, and then cometh the end. Consistent all throughout the Bible. But according to scattering seeds, no, it's not the end of the world. And why isn't it the end of the world? Well, because it it goes against the Hollywood movie. It goes against Nicolas Cage and what they teach. So of course it can't be the end of the world. You gotta have people disappearing, and you gotta have, I guess, unsaved people living for a thousand years. Uh, you <laughs> or you have to have a seven-year tribulation for unsaved people to have a second chance, and then the Antichrist comes, <clears throat> and. Um, and then, you know, everybody gets a second chance, but that's not what the Bible teaches at all. And I want to show you. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and what happens? All the tribes of the earth mourn. All right, so you can't. So, look. Why are they mourning if they... I mean, is that consistent with the Hollywood movie, Left Behind? When people just disappear? Oh, where'd, all our, where'd everybody go? No, that's not what it says here, is it? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Are they mourning because people disappear? No, they're mourning because they know it is the end of the world. They know. Okay? Alright, so let's go to Luke 21. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. They are going to be having heart attacks because they know it is the end of the world. All right, now that's important to understand. There's not going to be a second opportunity for people to get saved. All right, and then I'm going to sort of mesh this, that point with the, what he says down here. Um right there immortals among mortals okay so his claim is that they're gonna be immortal people living among mortal people after Jesus returns okay so what these guys never talk about is the sexual activity that is going to be taking place All right. and I really do wish they'd be honest with themselves and talk about it because then they might come to the realiza realization that this is not a possibility. All right. It's stupid. And it goes against what the Bible says. All right. So let me open up another verse here in 1st John chapter 2 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever Alright, so this verse right here says 
that the world passes away when the world passes away the lust also passes away okay so there's no more lust coming after the end of this world so there's no more sexual activity going on after the end of the world so there the immortals that are living among mortals that's happening right now when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then he's gonna stomp his foot on the head of the serpent and destroying all evil forever now let's take a look at uh, 1st Peter chapter 2 I think here let's find it 2nd Peter chapter 3 I'm way off not even close at least I was at least I got the name right, I guess. Okay, so in 2 Peter 3, let me just read this, because uh, uh, it's such a great ch chapter, it's a great book. The Bible such a great book. Okay, so let me read just a few verses, okay? And you'll see where I'm going with this, all right? This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there should come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. All right, so we get we get a, a couple examples of that phrase in the Bible, and we see this happening today. And anybody that teaches this idea that there is unsaved people living after Jesus returns they're doing it because of the lust of their heart and I showed you the other day of a preacher talking about this idea that he's gonna be in his immortal body and it's gonna be like he's 30 years old again and then he's gonna be able to have uh, I forget the word that he used, but sexual activity. He's going to be fit as a fiddle and having sex. Procreating is the word that he used. Excuse me. Pro, procreating. In the world to come. And that's not true. And that to these people, that idea sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Just sex, sex, sex. And then what do we read here in Second Peter 3? Knowing this first, that there should come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Alright, and so I don't want you to be ignorant and think this is only saying that there's a small group of people that you never come across in the life, you know, or whatever. This pertains to a whole lot of people, alright? and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing 
that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, so th that's what I want to show you there. And just so there's no confusion, I, it, I can strongly encourage you, if you have any doubts here, go back and read this. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty simple. The day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. All right. The day of the Lord is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. There shouldn't be any doubt about that at all. Now, all right, so let's go here. <clears throat> Now the judgment so when Jesus comes it's the judgment of God it's the great day of the Lord it is the great and terrible day and uh, the day of God all right okay so I guess uh, first of all let me just uh, ask you this here think about when the flood came it destroyed the whole world now were any of the unsaved people were any of the people that were not in the boat with Noah were any of those people outside of that boat were they saved the answer is no they were okay so did any of them people outside of the boat did they live after the flood the answer is no they were all killed only eight souls survived the flood so the floods came and destroyed the whole world now God promised us that he would never do that again he would never flood the world the whole world with water that's why uh, we have a rainbow as a sign that God promises us that he will never do that again but when the end of the world comes he's not going to destroy it by water this time it's going to be by fire all right and so by fire everything is going to melt in the which the heaven shall pass away with great noise and with the ele and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing them that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought you to be in holy in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat in Matthew 24 the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken this is it when that happens man it's the end of the world now from our perspective from those of us that are saved from our perspective 
we're not going to have to suffer um, this wrath of God being poured upon the earth. We're going to be up in the air with the Lord. All right, and it's, I mean, very clear here. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. And we got a great description here in First Thessalonians 4. Okay, for the Lord Himself, sh for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Alright, so here in Matthew 24, we see that Jesus comes in the clouds. He's descending from heaven. Get it? See, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Alright, so we're, we're going to see Jesus descending from heaven coming in the clouds with power and great glory and he shall gather together his elect from one end of heaven to the other and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air All right. the angels shall gather together his elect so we're gathered up into the air Alright, so when we're gathered up in the air, then our enemy is gathered at our feet. Alright, just as we read in Revelation 3 verse 9, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. We are up in the air. Our enemy is gathered at our feet alright our enemy is gathered at our feet just as we read in Revelation 20 Satan goes out to gather them together the unsaved people they are gathered at our feet when we are up in the air alright the beloved city which comes down from heaven alright the Jerusalem which is our city we are strangers in a strange land right now. This is not our world. All right. Jerusalem, which is above, that's our city. Okay, that's our city. So when Jesus comes, we are lifted up to meet the Lord. This is our city. And then the new city God comes down out of heaven and back onto the earth where there's it's a new earth with new heavens okay so the, our, Satan gathers together his people the unsaved and we're up in the air with the Lord and then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them alright in Genesis 3 verse 15 the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. We are up in the air with the Lord, and the Lord stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever and ever. Okay, so when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory all right because when this happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are transformed into our glorified bodies okay first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them all right so behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of night the last trump for the trumpet shall sound remember this remember this okay for the trumpet shall sound and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect for the trumpet shall sound 
for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he sends his angels out to gather us, first the dead in Christ and those of us which are alive are changed, <clears throat> excuse me, changed and then transformed into our glorified body. We are, in a sense, resurrected into our mortal bodies. I'm sorry, into a, from our mortal bodies into our immortal bodies. Excuse me. All right, so, okay, so we are lifted up, or we are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, we are changed, transformed into our glorified body, and lifted up into the air to meet the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, so when we're up in the air, then the wrath of God is poured upon the earth it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel and the same thing this is the same moment in time fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them <clears throat> now think about the fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night into the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise sound of a trumpet right and the element shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up just as the world was destroyed by water this time the world will be destroyed by fire all right so the lord will come as a thief in the night now think about this no man knows the day or the hour right <clears throat> Uh oh, I, no, this man doesn't know the Bible. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Somewhere it says something. All right. Oh, here we go. Matthew 24. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Watch therefore, for ye know it. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Alright, so, here in Second Peter, be, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, at an hour which no man knows. Right, so if you do a little word study here on thief, you, you can see the same thing. Right, and then Jesus gives us some parable, some parables to help us to understand. You know, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched. And so, he's telling us to watch. Really, watch. All right, so. Uh, this is great stuff um, so my point is that there's absolutely no doubt that Jesus comes as a thief in the night okay in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 when Jesus comes it's the end of of the world in second Peter chapter 3 the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away All right, we see the Sun being dark and the moon should not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken there should be absolutely no doubt that when this happens we are lifted up in the air our enemies just uh, is gathered at our feet and they are destroyed by fire that's when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory and there's a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth 
first earth, first earth were passed away, and there's no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice of, out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. So, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are we that are saved are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. We are changed, transformed into our glorified bodies at that moment. Our enemy is gathered at our feet and they are destroyed. And then there's a new heaven and a new earth. And we are set back down on a new earth with new heavens. Where there's no more pain, suffering, sorrow, no more death. And it's the everlasting kingdom. This is what we're putting our hope into. Alright, so I say all that because if you understand that, then it's easier to see that this idea of immortals living among mortals, this idea that when Jesus comes it's not the end of the world, it's ridiculous. And it, it's really, it's stupid. It really is. The Bible is so simple. I mean, it's telling us the same thing all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. When Jesus comes, it's the end of the world and the beginning of everlasting life.